All right, guys, getting ready to set the pump into the case. I have put just a small amount of assembly goo around the outside O-ring ceiling surface. And I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna use to guide the pump in. It's a combination of one exhaust manifold bolt of some kind. Found it in my toolbox. Doesn't have to go in too far. And then I've got, if you've ever done any porting where you use the sanding roll arbors and the ends break off of them where they can't, they won't hold the uh, sanding rolls anymore. I believe these will work perfectly to help align the pump. Now, when you put your gasket on here, make sure you locate this big row of like five or six, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six holes at the bottom of your case, you'll see all those holes. So you wanna make sure you line this thing up appropriately to get all those holes where they need to be, or you're gonna have a lot of problems now, I did put just a hair of, uh, and I do mean just a little bitty bit of that goo underneath this gasket just to kind of hold it, to kind of keep it from sliding around, just in case my dowels didn't work like I wanted it to. So, let's go uh, grab the pump. Now, keep in mind, you have to put a brand new external O-ring on that pump. I know the lighting isn't the best, but it's 6.30 on a Sunday morning. I don't have my garage door open. I'm trying to get this some of this stuff done before we gotta go to church. But I'm gonna put a little bit of assembly goo on my O-ring. Just kinda acts as a conditioner. To make it a little more flexible. And then we're just gonna slowly Put this little O-ring onto our pump into our receiving groove. It's amazing how flexible a new O-ring is. Now try to keep it flat, because you'll see this thing is made kind of as a flat, just a flat-faced washer. Try not to twist it. Because when you get it into your receiving groove, you want to make sure that it sets flat all the way around with no twisting. And it doesn't stick out a whole great deal, which is probably going to be a blessing when we go to set this thing into the case. All right, I got a little bit of a assembly goo on my pump ceiling rings. I have already pre-staged my uh, bolts with the new washers that come with it. So now, same as when we were lining up our gasket, we want to get all of our six holes. Remember those six holes in the pump? Well, naturally, they're going to want to line up with the holes in the case. We can get this all lined up with these. Ooh, that thing got back got me. Get my hand back. Alright. So now we got her partially where we want it. Get 
Just checking the Okay. Start getting these at least started in here. Now in the I think it was my rebuild catalog, rebuild manual. It says to make sure This will turn. Yep, it's turning. Because they're saying that if you if you can't turn your input shaft, once you start engaging your pump, then you're looking at uh, something being wrong with your direct or your forward clutches. That's kind of scary. Then I just take and one by one put in my bolts. Take out my alignment pieces and put all, now you'll notice this is an older case, older style pump and case that has eight uh, bolts, which is pretty cool because that's, that's kind of the ones they recommend for the performance build. Then we will snug these down and then run over them with a okay. torque wrench. For the sake of time, I have gone through and just kind of run them down with my cheap Harbor Freight quarter inch impact driver. No, I did not let it hammer or anything like that. I basically just snugged them down to save time for the video. And I'm not going to do it all in one motion. I want to try to sneak up on this torque. So that there's, you know, even pressure on that O-ring to seal. And naturally, once you get this thing torqued to, uh, I'm going to torque it to 20, 20 foot-pounds. My assembly book says 18 to 20. So I think I'm just going to go with the 20 and, and run it there. We have our front pump installed, all eight bolts torqued to 20, brand new O-ring, brand new output or input seal, a uh, new converter bearing, everything's good to go and they say to make sure your input shaft turns. Mine does. They say as long as you can still turn this, then there's nothing binding or nothing wrong with your direct drum and your forward drum. So that's about all I'm gonna put on this video. I'm gonna start working on my valve body and get that part done so that we can button this thing up and get ready to put it in the vehicle. It's not been super hard. I'd probably put it on an eight out of 10 only because those stupid direct and forward drums fought me so much that was the hardest part of the entire build.